Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, some of the videos on this channel are uh, about AWS, some of them are about blockchain, that's going to continue. Um, I want to launch a new track today which is all about basically finance for beginners and the first part of that is going to be talking about basically how to really understand how um, how interest payments work. The reason why I'm doing that is because it's, it's very much sort of lays the foundations for um, a, a, a longer term track on um, on concepts around fixed income um, financial markets um, and the reason I want to do this series is because I actually work in financial markets but on the technology side so you can kind of call that the the fintech domain and I think some of the time you know I work with a lot of developers and and, and sometimes it's not easy for developers um, to to actually understand the ins and outs of, of the of the in, of the instruments and the, and the marketplaces which our clients uh, work in, and, and and actually that doesn't just apply to, to developers as well. It could apply to you know anybody coming out of university who um, who who's interested in learning about fixed income. So hopefully, hopefully this is going to be so kind of useful for a lot of different um, different people out there. A couple of ground rules. Um, th this is for myself. Uh, I don't. I'm not going to take any shortcuts. I'm not going to assume any knowledge, and I'm not going to skip um, forward. I always find that when people explain things to me. The, the the moment that people start saying, okay, we're going to skip ahead here or just assume that for the time being or this kind of thing, that's when your brain starts to think, mm, okay, I'm not so sure I understand this anymore. I want to make it um, as as sort of detailed as possible um, and, and take it right from the beginning. And hopefully if things work out, we'll be talking about securitization and credit default swaps, but having built a solid platform um, uh, starting with the, the very basics of compound interest. Um, slight disclaimer here, the videos are not going to be particularly short. None of my videos generally are. Um, so, but I think what they lack in sort of conciseness, hopefully they, they, they make up for in, in sort of uh, in useful detail. So if you're interested, um, you know, welcome to the, welcome to the track and uh, please follow along. Okay, so here I am with my trusty graphics tablet. Um, I hope my writing is not going to be too illegible, um, but l let's see how it goes, okay? So, simple scenario. Person over here has some money and they want to invest it in a savings account in the bank. And the bank, at the time of this, uh, of the, um, of this transaction, says our annual interest rate is R, okay? And the interest rate, and the interest is paid annually, right? So what that means is if I, if, if my uh, person over here pays principal P0 into the bank account at the beginning of the year, then after one year, that principle has grown to P0 times 1 plus R. R is the annual interest rate. Okay, so interest rates are normally or not but always quoted on an annual basis, even if interest is paid, and we'll get to that in a second, uh, more often, let's say quarterly or, or, or monthly, the rates are themselves are quoted as an annual rate. So after year one, the, the principal, so principal means the, the outstanding balance, and this is used all over the place in, in financial markets. Okay. So after, after one year, the principal is now worth the P0, time equals zero, P1 year is worth this much, right? So if the interest rate, for example, is, if R equals 5%, or let's write it as 0 0.05, then after one year, if P0 was 100 pounds, then P1 would be worth 100, times 1 plus oops, 5, which is 105 pounds, right? 
So that's, that's a very, very simple calculation, um, probably not very interesting. Now, at that point, a person can get the money back, or they can say, do you know what, keep the money there for a second year. Right? Keep it there for the time being. Um, let's say R stays the same. So after two years, because the, the interest in the second year is, is applied to not only the initial investment, P0, but also the interest paid on the first year, so the total the total amount in the total bank balance after two years is P zero times one plus R times one plus R, right? Or P zero one plus R squared. And this is the concept of uh, of compound interest that I'm sure many people have, have, have heard about, maybe some are intimately aware of. Um, it's, it's not a massively complicated concept, it, 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 but there are complications to it. Um, so the, the first, so this is compound, compound interest, right? Now, the, the second, the, the first complication is, because um, I'm going to take this very quickly into a discussion about my, uh, my own bank uh, statement and, and show you exactly how to calculate your own. Um, in the case of a in the case of a bank, often what happens is that your interest is actually paid monthly, not annually. So how does that work then? So let's say let's say that let's move the screen down a bit. So let's say let's say that um, the the interest rate because let's let's face it, five percent is not very realistic at the moment. The interest rate is one point five nine percent right this is this is called the sort of the the nominal nominal interest rate and let's say the let's say the the payments interest payments are monthly and they compound monthly, right? So just like most bank accounts, when you get that interest paid into your account, it stays there, and that interest earns interest the following month. So, so basically, but the key difference here is that our interest is getting paid monthly, not annually, right? So simplistically, if you go into this arrangement where the interest rate is, is 1.59% per annum as a nominal rate, with the interest being paid and accruing monthly, then essentially it becomes a bit different now, but it's not too it's not too dissimilar. So P after one month is equal to P zero, which is your again your initial investment, times one plus R over twelve. And the key thing there is that so R is the is the nominal interest rate, which means that basically that interest rate spans the entire year. And if you want to if you want to essentially know how much the how much interest is going to be paid within a given month within that year, because we're 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 calculating our interest monthly, you have to divide it by twelve. Okay, that's very important. And similarly, as long as I don't take any any of the money out, etc., etc., and I leave it in there. The principal after two months is P zero one plus R over twelve times one plus R over twelve, and then P six month. I think you know where I'm going with this, right? Is basically P zero one plus R over twelve to the power 6, right? And if I leave it in there the whole 12 months, okay, then our final balance is P0 times 1 plus R over 12 to the power 12. So in actual fact, and sometimes, let's say, let's say conversely, the, this, this, this is a bank account that pays interest quarterly. Okay, so in that case, 
let's say the rate, you know, R is, let's say R is the same, um, doesn't affect this uh, in, in any case, but um, we, we, we say, so P three months equals P zero one plus R over four, because there are four three month periods in the year, and uh, P six months is P zero one plus R over four to the power two, right? Because after the six months, six months is the second three month period. So it's, 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 it's basically the, it's the, the three month balance multiplied by one plus R over four again. And then P 12 months equals P zero one plus R over four to the power four. So you can see clearly there's a, there's a relationship here and here and here. And essentially, in a nutshell, the, the formula for, um, for basically the, the, the end balance um, after a certain number of periods, of compounding periods, is, is as follows. P equals P0 1 plus R over N to the power N T. And let's go into that, just let's explain that formula properly. Um, so P is your final balance or principle. This is your initial principle. N is the number of compounding periods per period. And when I say number of compounding periods per period, um, which might sound a bit confusing, what I mean is what, what we define as a period is essentially the, the the, the the unit of time over which the interest rate R applies. Okay, so mostly, as I said, interest rates are mostly quoted in annual terms. So normally when we say period, we, we mean um, a, a year. And N is the number of compounding periods within a year. That, that's generally the case. So here, in our, in our example here, N was 4 because we're paying quarterly interest. Over here, N was 12 because we're paying monthly interest, okay? And T is the number of periods. Um, again, so not to confuse you, in this example, it means the number of years, right? So again, T is the number of number of periods over which this, this interest rate, this quoted interest rate applies. Um, so in most cases, T means the number of years. So if we go back to our example here and see how this works, with the, the three months. So here, our, so n equals four, and nt here, what is that in this, in this scenario? Well, n, n equals four, we know that. t, this is, a, this is after three months. t is basically how many years? Well, three months is a quarter of a year, so t, is one quarter. So nt equals one, which is why this is just one, right? And here, we've got the power of two, which is nt, which is basically uh, four times a half, right? Because it's half a year, right? So that that is the formula for for compound interest that that's and, and and you'll see that all over the place um so that that's a quick introduction to compound interest in the next video i'm going to show you an actual example of my bank statement in excel and show you exactly how banks calculate interest because i always got confused you know do they if i pay money in uh, halfway through the day does it do i get half a day's worth of interest or how do they round it just um, just to kind of get more confidence about what's going on. So hopefully you'll join me in that one and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.